Hey, hey, hey. Sarita Rita in the build. I mean, Sarita Williams Photography. Let me be official. Sarita Williams Photography. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Hello, Sean Drizzle in the building. How are you feeling? Is your voice back? Of course it is. Hey, Clarence, how are you? How are you doing? You at work? Hey, Monica, Monica, what's up, what's up? Facebook user, got to say your name. Got to say your name. Whitney, 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 how's the baby, baby? <laughs> oh, I love you guys. How's everything doing? How's, every, how, how's everything going? How's everybody doing? Hey, Miss Jackie, how are you doing? George is in the building. Good, I'm doing better. Come on here, much better. Thank you, Father. I, I pray the tea had something to do with that. I pray the tea. I like to believe in my mind. What it do, baby, is good. That's what I like to hear. Hey, Miss Tasha Kelly. I can see you. I can see your picture and your thumbnail. Facebook is acting right for the most part, it looks like. Okay, Linda, Linda from Oklahoma City. What's up? Oh, yes. Have you been taking your tea, Miss Jackie? That's what, I'm like. That's what I like to hear. Hey, Chari in the building. I love you. Hey, Rashida. How are you doing, Miss Jackson? Sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. I guess we don't want to sing the rest of that. And that's probably not appropriate to sing before prayer. Let's be holy. Let's be holy. Thank you, Father. Holy, 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 holy. Yep. Come on and get the tea. The tea work, y'all. The tea work. Listen, come on, Fort Worth, Texas. Come on, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm going to come back to Texas. I feel Texas is calling me. I don't know what that's about. I just, I was next door to it. I was close to it. I was close to it in Oklahoma over the weekend. Listen, Oklahoma blessed me. Um, but I, 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 I could feel Texas. I'm good. Thank you for asking. I love Texas. Hey, Miss Donna. I love you. Yep, we're back in full effect. Yep, beats is amazing. Beats are amazing. Everybody should be on some sort of beats. Hey, Allison, how are you? Who said, come on, we miss you? Who said that? <laughs> One thing we're going to do on here is laugh. We're going to laugh and then y'all are going to, it makes you, it makes you happy. And then when I start yelling, you won't be as, you won't be as a taken back. I was yelling in Oklahoma. I didn't mean to, but people kept, they came after the session. They're like, we were in other rooms, ma'am. We were in other rooms and we could hear you. You were loud. I can't help that. Let's go, Chandra. You going to Jalen's um, 316 Apparel is having a fashion show in the month of May. Everybody should um, come and support. Um, come and support. I'm doing well. Thank you. Yep, I feel something, I feel something in Texas. I don't know what that is. Let me pray through it. Maybe we should do a Rafa night. Maybe we should do a Rafa night. I'm thinking about doing a Rafa night in Oklahoma. I'm praying about it when. Um, we were going to do it once before last year. And um, I just, I didn't know much about Oklahoma. Rafa night for the people who don't know, because we haven't done one. We did one in Ohio, but it's just a night of prayer healing and prophecy, prayer, healing and prophecy. Um, it's very, it's, it's very good. It's very, it's, it's very encouraging. I'll say it like that. It's very, very, very encouraging. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't know much about Oklahoma or how this, how the layout of Oklahoma is. So there's Lawton and Oklahoma city. And I, you know, when you live in some, a place like Atlanta, Traveling 40 minutes is like just going to the grocery store. It's normal, right? It's just normal. So, but so when you go other places, sometimes 40 minutes is too far, right? And so I just didn't understand how Oklahoma was set up, but I had such a good time in Oklahoma, y'all. And so I said, okay, we definitely need, and we just want to partner with, with churches. I probably partner with the Anglins um, and then, then partner with other churches. We just want to pray for everybody there. Um, you know, people come in from Texas because Texas is literally right there. Um, we just want to pray and lay hands and believe God for healing and wholeness. Um, and um, Oklahoma really is on the mind of God. It really is. Hey, Sarah, Mia, 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 I love you. 
Hey, Miss Kay, how are you? Um, so we're going to pray tonight. We're not going to be on long. I always say that and I start yelling and, and I get happy and I start sweating and it's all funny and stuff. How's everybody doing? I really want to know how's your weekend? How are you feeling? Are you excited? So clearly the rapture didn't happen. I know I got jokes because everybody's here. Either we all need to get saved or either we are secure. If you're not saved, let's be done. <laughs> I've been saved about 2,000 times, so I feel like I'm secure. I repent. I try to. So it seems like everybody is here. You know, I, I'm not making light of that. I know that you guys saw um, all of the cistern, and then the comment was named something Lucifer, and then they're trying to shoot missiles into the comment Lucifer, and then they're trying to find something in dark matter, and it's very... I don't know. There seems to be a preoccupation with the demonic, with what organizations are doing and things are doing. And so I'm not making light of that. But I can I ask a question. I'm just I was really curious. And I just said this before the Lord. Why are why do the saints? Why do we act like um, why do we act like we are we're on the defensive? I just. Why do we act like, I know they said, I read something where witches were like, we got to get in the path of the eclipse. Why do we care? We have the power. Jesus said all power and dominion has been given me. All power in heaven and all dominion on earth belongs to Jesus and you belong to Jesus. Why are we always acting like we got to, I, I was just, you know, I, why? Why do we have to counteract something? Listen, why is that not our norm that we just have a normal day? Because we stay in the realm of the spirit. Do, are things popping? I mean, yes, there was an earthquake on the East Coast a couple of days ago. Y'all already know Um the engine failure. I was on a plane that had lost an engine. It lost, <laughs> it lost the whole engine yesterday. And that wasn't the only plane that had engine failure on yesterday. Why, why, why are we acting like, come on, Sarah Mia, why are we acting like we are on the defense and we got to go into hardcore prayer? Why? Why? I don't understand. Why? Help me understand. Why are we doing that? Uh, your norm is power. Your norm is, we don't have to do anything extra to counteract anything extra because we already extra. Jesus. Yeah, you got bigger fish to fry because you shouldn't be frying chicken no more, right? So <laughs> we don't bake a chicken. We don't fry a chicken. We don't wash a chicken and we don't stay away from chicken. And I don't have to say in Jesus name, hear ye, hear ye, thus saith the Lord, the affirmation of Jehovah. Stop it. Stay away from chicken. You should have been listening to God already. The Y'all already know one of the biggest chicken plants has shut down because of like some sort of bird disease. Stop it with the chicken unless you're doing something local. Right. I'm not for people. There's I have no desire to be a vegan it just it's just shaking down like that no desire I, I like protein um i like hair growth i like skin i like collagen you know what i'm saying i don't right sarah mia put the we already talked about this sarah mia we already talked about this oh that's dope you see that's that's dope your and your child has probably got meat on their bones has muscle run real fast has a great brain right um in 2024, uh, y'all, we don't have to counteract anything, please. And I, I don't want to be like I'm being flippant. I don't want to be like I'm being nonchalant in the realm of the spirit, right? Um, because I'm not. But I am saying, let's stay focused. I, I told the dream that I had. Um, and... It was a game that we know the eclipse is not a game. God does the whole eclipse thing, the sun and the moon, that all came from the father. But there were games that were being played in the heavenlies. Thank you, Sarita Williams, photography. 
Yes, like, share, tag, and broad the, the broadcast, please. <laughs> Never say that, right? Oh my, she said, how many baby chickens had to die for that 12 piece? Oh my gosh, she took it there. My, 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 she, Miss Nicole, <laughs> right? So um, I, I don't want to be like I'm being nonchalant with the things of the spirit realm because we're not, y'all know that's one thing I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, it's not, but we have to get, it's got to be our norm, right? It's got to be our norm. And so I know a lot of Christians were doing a lot of extra praying. Listen, what if we just prayed all the time? What if we prayed, what if we were, we prayed every five minutes, for 30 seconds, five minutes. What, what, if, what if we just had a lifestyle where we were prayer? We are the word of the Lord released. What if we live like that? So we didn't have to do anything extra unless the Lord said, come on, let's do something. Why are we playing like we don't have no power? We don't have to get in the path. And listen, we don't have to get in the path of the eclipse to receive power. Yeah. We don't have to set our, we don't have to get in the path and, and because, you know, the moon and, you know, people practice. We ain't, we don't get no power from a created thing. We, we rock with Jesus, all power. We don't have to bow down to mother earth, all power. Mother earth, air quotes in the air, is groaning for the people who have power to rise up, raise up and declare. Right? Declare. What, what, what are we doing? And I'm not, now, now listen, if you took some time to pray and you did that, that, nothing, no shame, no shade. This ain't, we ain't shaming nobody for doing what the Lord is telling you to do. We absolutely not. But I am saying you are power, right? You, God's power is coming through you. You, God's power is overshadowing you. You are power. Listen, the power that God has put in the saints is eclipsing. Come on here. Greater is he that is in <laughs> than he that is in. So there's always an eclipse. <laughs> there's always an eclipsing that is happening every single day. If we understood greater, if we believe greater is he. Come on here. That's the eclipse. That's the eclipse. Look up the other definition for eclipse. Look up the definition for eclipse. Come on here. That's the eclipse. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the eclipse. Greater is he that is in me. So I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to get in my car. I'm going to do what I do. Greater is he that is in me. Thank you, Jesus. Greater is he that is in me. The great blessing. Greater, Shalabasuramaya. So they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have. They, they. You're right. If, 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 if social media has just opened up portals of shenanigans, it's opened up portals of shenanigans. And if you don't, in, in when we, when you were in college, and they're now teaching it more so in grade school, having to understand Google. And having have remember if you're doing research, you don't pull stuff from Wikipedia, right? You don't because why? Anybody can set up a Wikipedia page. It has no sources. It has no sourcing. There is no fact checking, right? It's the same thing with TikTok, Facebook. It's like we're listening to Wikipedia, and we're saying that this Wikipedia stuff is facts. Wikipedia is a good start. But you can't you can't cite it. You cannot use it in an academic paper. It's not usable. It's not we can, we are, we already you gotta you gotta pull from credible sources. That just seems to have gone out the window. That seems and 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 listen, lean in, lean in, lean in, lean in. For the people who are into us uh, um, uh, astronomy and they do all of that you would understand that there's they, they over here talking about retrograde and a lot of this is lining up with some of the stuff that people who are saved are saying <laughs> we rock with god only what the world is living and what the world is going through we are ambassadors we get our marching orders from the lord right we get our so there isn't any you over here unbeknownst to you believe in something that the planets are in retrograde i don't even understand what that means retro and grade is it going backwards or something like that? Is that what retro? 
<laughs> Should I read a book? <laughs> I just see it as going backwards. Right. I don't, I don't know what that means. So, um, you, uh, you honestly, there's a whole bunch of people out here who are believing really I, 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 uh, astronomy stuff, unbeknownst to them, unbeknownst to them. Right. So we got to fact check and we need to be fact checking in the realm of the spirit, right? In the realm of the spirit, push the plate away of shenanigans and get your ear uh, pristine, right? Uh, get your ear pristine and in tune with the father because it's going to help you. You are a person of power. Everybody that's tuning in, right? I believe everybody here is saved. If you're not saved, you know what I'm saying? Say me or message me or something. But if you say you're not saved, everybody on here is going to pray for you. And then we're going to lead you to the Lord. And we are just going to jump up and down because your name is added to the Lamb's book of life, right? But the Y2K was ridiculous. I never want to live through that again. And we, I guess... I guess the rapture was supposed to happen. I didn't hear that one, but I, I saw it. I guess the rapture, was, all kinds of stuff. Now, am I saying that there's not things happening in the realm of the spirit? Absolutely not. But I am saying you're already in the know and you are, you come in hot. You come in in victory, right? You come, you're not trying to counteract anything. Why? Because God is not counteracting anything. God doesn't, listen, God is not in the practice of counteracting and no witch, no warlock, no other religion. God is not counteracting any other religion. God is not counteracting any other power. He does, he does not. He just does not. Right? Y2K was a mess. Y2K was a thing. And I never want to, I just, and I believed it. Because back in the day, they used to say WWW was 666. Y'all remember that? That's what my dad did. Remember with dial-up internet? When it was catching on, they were saying WWW was the mark of the beast. Look at all the good that has come from WWW. Look, look, look at all the good. Look at all of how God has been able to get his word right through all kinds of nations, all kinds of people because of WWW. But back then, WWW was the beast, was the mark of the beast. I don't know if y'all remember that. Right. So we, we have we really got to practice being sober minded. We really got to practice like putting things before the Lord. We really got to practice putting on power and being in aware that we're always walking in power and you don't put that down. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world, period, point blank. So let's pray. Today's going to be real good. Today's going to bless your socks off. Y'all ready? Get your pen and your paper. Today's is, today is going to bless your socks off. We're not going to be on super long, but I promise you you're going to be blessed. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for securing this room. I thank you, Lord, for all the people who were here, all the people who will listen to the replay. I thank you, Lord, that there is a special blessing. I thank you that there is a word for them. I thank you, Lord, that you were speaking in their ear gate, their eye gate, their heart gate. I thank you. You're speaking to their, the word of the Lord will go to the cavities of their mortal body, will go to their spirit man in every seat of their soul. I thank you, Lord, that you hear them, see them, listen to them. I thank you, Lord, that they you have they have your attention. I thank you that they are the apple of your eye. So if anybody gets on here today and they're feeling any kind of way, if anybody's on here feeling like um, they're unseen, they're not heard, they're having some, some, some struggles in prayer, they're having some struggles with what's going on with their life. I thank you, Lord, that this is a miracle room. I thank you that this is a miracle room. I thank you that this is a miracle room. Hallelujah. Um, I read in the prayer wall that um, uh, there was a, 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 a word that was put up uh, a, two weeks ago, maybe a week ago. The Lord talked about housing and having to move while we were on. She messaged me and said that her, um, her, her landlord people were like, you got 30 days to move. While we were on, while the Lord was uh, releasing that word, she already has housing. And she said that she had multiple uh, she found multiple places to go. This is a miracle room. And so, Father, I thank you for miracles on miracles on miracles. I thank you for signs and wonders. I thank you for healing and wholeness. I thank you for victory and triumph. I thank you, Lord, that we're walking in in victory and triumph. And so, God, if anybody feels like they're at the bottom of the barrel, victory and triumph, they are above only and not beneath. They are the head and they are not the tail. I prophesy your word. I declare your word. They are above only and not beneath. I thank 
thank you, God, that their back is not against the wall because their creator and their father, their creator who is their father, their father who is their creator is seated in rest and his back is not against the wall. And so, Father, I thank you for miracles. There's no such thing as a big miracle or a little miracle. I thank you for healing from cancer. I thank you for healing from people who are waiting for reports to come back and they're feeling some kind of way. This is a miracle room. And so, Father, I thank you that angst and worry and anxiety must flee before you seven ways and that they will be thrown into a peace. They will be thrown into shalom in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for people who are in the room and there are loose ends and maybe they are uh, facing, they got to move or they're facing something's going on. It feels like it's a big season of flux where we prophesy in agreement that it is, it is the fight is fixed. The flux is going to give way to miracles. The flux is going to give way to one of their most biggest blessed seasons that they've ever walked in. And so we hold on to that, Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're going to speak and say. No weapon formed against your people shall prosper in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that every tongue that rises against, that there is already judgment and they have already condemned it. They open their own mouth and they judge anything that has been set against them because this is the heritage or the inheritance of the saints. And so, Father, I thank you that the heritage and the inheritance has been activated. I thank you that it's been active. They're walking in the activation of said thing in Jesus' name. I'm going to go ahead and pray it. I thank you, Lord, in the dream realm where things are moving fast at night. It seems like things are moving fast. And so people can't hold on to maybe certain scenes that they are seeing in their sleep. They don't know if it's a dream, but they're are seeing pictures and flashes of things. I thank you, Lord, for everything that is not of you, everything that is beneath the standard, everything that will come to fight against or seek to exalt itself against the knowledge of God, that right now together in a room full of believers, that thing is pulled down, cast down, according to Matthew chapter 13, bind, bundle, and burn, that the harvest men, the angelic host is now uh, stepping in every evil altar that will try to be set up, every picture in the imagination, any where people feel like uh, something's happening at night, but they don't know, but they're having crazy thoughts or they're seeing crazy things or they're feeling like fear is trying to move in during the day. I thank you that God, you have set the harvest men. I thank you, God, that you have set angelic hosts. You have set warring angels round about them. I thank you, Father, that right now, surely goodness and mercy is flanking them. I thank you that you are their rear guard, but you are also their covering. The shadow of El Shaddai is coming over them in the name of Yeshua. Sheila. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we thank you for what will happen today in this room. I thank you for revelation. That information is changed into revelation in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We pray. Amen. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And I'm going to tell a story. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to read this in three, one, two, three, uh, three or four different translations. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. It's going to be verse 13. Verse 13. I'm going to tell a story and this is going to come alive. Okay. So take notes of what the Lord is speaking to you from my story. The Lord's going to, he's going to speak about your story. And I want you to walk in this all year long. Let me know when you have it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. I'm going to start with the King James Version. Okay, and so and from there, I'm going to define some words for you in Greek. So write those words down. And then I'm going to read it from the Young's Literal Translation. And then I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. And I may or may not do the Amplified Translation, if that's okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. There's even going to some people on here, there's even going to be a dream interpretation You've been praying about a dream and the Lord says that there's going to be some, the, the symbols are going to become revelation today. Write down the revelation and begin to pray it. Begin to pray it. That revelation is going to open up some doors to you. That revelation is going to open up some doors that are right in front of you, but you couldn't see that they were doors. Hallelujah. And so you're getting ready to walk through some doors because you didn't recognize that it was a door. Hallelujah. You didn't recognize that it was some doors that were right in front of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Verse 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. There hath no temptation, the word temptation, right? The word temptation, it means exper experiment of good experiment a, or a, an experiment that's going to bring about a proof. I need you write that down. So this is good. This is the, this is the good part of it. Temptation is a putting to proof by experiment of good. A putting to proof by experiment of good. All temptation is not bad. I know that it usually has a bad connotation because of what we think about temptation. But when we dig down into the revelation of what temptation is, it's also a putting to proof by experiment. Circle that word experiment of good. Of discipline. So putting to proof, a putting to proof by experiment of good discipline or provocation, adversity to be tried, which would be adversity. A trial, which what is what does a trial do? It proves. A test, such as the test of love of Galatians, a trial of man's fidelity, integrity, or virtue. So it's a test of man's fidelity, integrity, virtue, or constancy. It can be an enticement, a sin, an arising of the desires from outward circumstances. It can be an internal temptation to sin. It could be an temptation by the devil. But when we, when, when we deal with temptation, it's not always bad. That word is neutral. We have to figure out what, what is happening here. Is God proving? Is there coming a proof to my life? Is there coming a proof to the season, right? And, and, and this adversity is getting ready to pr produce something through the proof, right? So that's the word temptation, right? When we deal with the word um, I'll drop down to the C part, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. Let's deal with the word escape. An egress, an exit, escape from temptation, temptation being how we just defined it, an end. An exit, literal or figurative. Right? So, but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. We never say that when we're quoting the scripture. I don't know what happens to the to that part. <laughs> I don't know what happens to that part of the script of the verse. We never say that part, but I want you to circle that that you may be able to bear it. And I'm going to read this through Young's literal translation. No temptation has taken you except human. And God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able, but he will make with the tem temptation, the also the outlet for you being able to bear it. He will make with the temptation also the outlet. So I told you to circle that part, a way to escape. And so it feels like when we quote that, that there is, there's something being made so that we can make the exit. There's something happening that we can make the exit. But the reality is, is that when the temptation, right? Remember the definition of temptation, please. When I say that word, I want you to see it as neutral. That when the proof through proving temptation, the proof through proving opportunity comes upon you, right? 
And so, well, Anise, what if it's bad? What if it's the enemy? It's still a proof to prove. And why? Because all things work together for your good. So even when the enemy is trying it, God is still going to use it so that it's going to be called, it's going to come upon you as a proof to the proof, the proving, the proof that whatever God is showing you, said about you, said to you or whatever, the proof is now in the pudding, right? The proof is now in the pudding. But uh, when you say a, a, a way, a way to escape, it's really the way. It's really the way to escape because he will make with, right? Young's literal. He will make with the temptation also the outlet. Young's literal. He will, capital H, capital E, God. God will make with the temptation also the outlet, the outlet, not a outlet or an outlet. When the temptation is created, when the opportunity of proof is created, the exit is created alongside it. The two are created at the same time. And the, the outlet or the exit a lot of times is the rest of the verse for you, for your being able to bear it, for your being able to bear it. He will make with the temptation also the outlet for your being able to bear it. So a strength. Sometimes the exit is just strength coming upon you. Sometimes the exit is the Holy Spirit coming upon you. Sometimes the outlet is a, a, a mercy coming upon you. It is, it is, a, it is a, a powerful version of you coming out of you. This becomes the outlet that the outlet was only comes upon you because this opportunity also came upon you. Now I'm going to read it in the, out of the, um, the Passion Translation. All right. All tests. No, that's the wrong one. I was going to read that one too. Listen. We all experience times of testing. We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. But God will be faithful to you. But God will be faithful to you. Write that down. And so you should say, how will God be faithful to me? Right? All right. They're getting ready to answer you. This is so good. He will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face. This is good. But God will be faithful to you. He screens, filters the severity, the nature, and the timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. So it becomes a controlled environment. So you're inside of a controlled environment and he's already screened and filtered the severity, the nature, and the timing. How long? of every test or trial so that you can bear it. And each test is what? My $5 favorite word, an opportunity for you to trust him more. So because of the test temptation, because of the proving and the proof, it is an opportunity for you to trust him more for along with every trial God has provided for you a way of escape that will bring you out of it victoriously. It's going to bring you out victoriously. So the escape is also endurance. You are going to come out of whatever God brought you to. In the mind of the believer, God brings me to everything I face. In the mind of the believer, faith of the believer says, if God brought me through the door, I've already come out of the other side. That's where the mind of the believer is. He 
it, God will always be faithful to you. But God will be faithful to you. God is screening. God is filtering the severity, nature, and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. Everything that you walk into, God is saying, I already made sure that you've got strength to come out to the other side. And so instead of praying, God strengthen me, God strengthen me, God strengthen me, fall into the strength that is already available to you. That is so good. Fall in to the peace that is already available to you. What? God endowed you to endure. God has endowed you with endurance. Inside of endurance is peace. Inside of endurance is, is glory. Inside of endurance is grace. Inside of endurance is dunamis. Inside of endurance, it, 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 it is there is authority. And so you got to lean in to what is already. So whenever you come to a door of temptation, I'm also coming to a door of activation. Hey, that's so good to me. Whenever I come to a door of temptation, I'm actually crossing over the threshold of activation. Some things would be dormant in me and I would never know the height, the width, the breadth, of the power that God has made available to me unless I get to this opportunity or this open door of temptation and I can lean into what was already put in me or what I've already been endowed with. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you got access to a parachute, you don't need it unless you're going to jump out of a plane. You don't activate the parachute in the plane. You don't activate a parachute in a car. You don't activate a parachute on the ground. You don't activate a parachute in the house. You activate a parachute in high up in the air. And so the parachute's power is unseen. It is untapped. It is not needed nor necessary until you get into the right environment so that the parachute can carry you. And so the Lord is saying to you, you, I've given you parachute upon parachute upon parachute, but you don't know that you have them and you don't know that you need them. And so when you get to the door of opportunity and things seem big and hard and things seem crazy, the Lord says, check your back. I'm on here. The Lord says, check your back and release the button. Release so that what you got to carry you is getting ready to be activated. God says, listen, you don't know what's on the inside of you until I bring you to certain doors. And it is an opportunity for you to put your faith in me, the Lord. And it's an opportunity for you to step into greater measures of power. Thank you, Lord. So I'm getting ready to bless you with the story. So um, y'all know if you looked at what I put on the uh, prayer wall or what I put on my my, my Facebook status yesterday, um, I, I was leaving Oklahoma. I was leaving Oklahoma and I was getting on a plane and um, the the a host was so gracious to get me first class. Was I was in first class. And so I was the first seat, right? I was the first seat going and I was the first seat coming, right? And so uh, it was it, uh, on the on the way coming. I was like, this is super prophetic. I don't, I don't know why it's super prophetic, but I just felt like it on the way coming. Somebody had just celebrated their millionth mile flown. Right. It was their the million. I had never been on a flight in all my flights in all my years. I have never seen anybody fly a million, a million uh, miles. This was their this was their millionth mile moment. And so I was like, oh, that's so prophetic. That's so prophetic. And so everything smooth, smooth sailing. Uh, with the plane is loaded, everything's locked and loaded, everybody's having a good time, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't get any sleep before, I, I my, my flight was super early, I got to my room at one, I had to pack, right? But I, I was like, it's okay, it's good, because I'm gonna be home by 11. I'm gonna be home by 11. So my whole travel day was supposed to be about six hours, and that includes getting to airports and getting from airports and the flight itself. It was gonna be about six hours. So it's okay if I don't have no sleep. It's okay, you know, uh, like you have a little nap. I was very tired, um, but it was smooth sailing, was super happy, everything was good. So everybody's seated, everybody's cool. The plane is good. We get on the, um, we, we taxi, we get in the air. Everything is smooth. I mean, the, the pilot is bad to the bone. In the front of the plane, you can feel the plane. In the front of a plane, 
It's like riding the front of, and being in the front of a roller coaster. You can feel more of what's going on when you sit in the front of the plane, right? When we talk about physics. In this is just, I'm just giving you just some little facts. If a plane is going down, the best position to be in the plane is in the back. The probability of people sitting in the front, first class folks, sitting in the front and surviving a plane crash is very slim. But, it, but the people in the back have greater chances of surviving a plane crash. I don't know if y'all knew that. I don't know if y'all knew that because of the aerodynamics of a plane. If a plane is going down, it's not going down tail first. It's, it's, go, it's going down nose first. It's going to flip and it's going to go down nose first. All those people in the front, your instant, your probability for surviving that are very, very, very small. When the plane is taking off, when the plane is landing, you feel just like in a roller coaster, you feel a lot of what is happening in the front of a plane, right? Air quality is the best in the front. Air quality is the worst in the back. So the further you sit, and, I, and I've sat in the back seats of some plane, right, some planes right by the bathroom, and the air quality is horrible. I mean, it's stuffy, it's thick, you can barely breathe, it smells like everything. I mean, it just, I can't even name one thing because it smells like everything. In the front of the plane, it smells like fresh air. It, it, there's no smell. There's no there. It's it's open, right? It's 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 free. It's like Febreze in the back of the plane. It's like humidity. <laughs> it's shenanigans, right? But if a plane is goes down, the best place to be is in the back, not the front. So um, we get on the the plane. It taxis off. You know what I'm saying? We're in the air. The plane is going higher and higher and higher. And then we hear the first ding, y'all know what I'm talking about, the first seatbelt sign comes goes off, right? Because now it's time for people who need to go to the restroom, you can get up and walk. That's where we were in the flight. That first ding, meaning the seatbelt sign has now green. If you need to get up and walk around, meaning go to the restroom, then you get to now walk. After the first ding, that's when the... the um, Flight attendant comes on, and that's when they begin talking about thank you, medallion members. Thank you, people. They start thanking all the people. They start telling you how long the flight time is going to be. They hope they start thank you for choosing Delta, Southwest, whatever. That's that first announcement. You know what I'm talking about? So we were in the air, air. We were in the air, 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 and we are climb. We have we have climbed past the altitude where it's evened off and now you can walk around. That's how far we were in the air. As she is making her announcement, there was a, a boom, the plane shook, and then there was like this rattling and it stopped. She kept talking. She didn't stop talking. She didn't pause like to see what it was. She said, hold on, we'll be right back. She kept speaking. We could hear everything that she's saying, and she doesn't even address it. She she doesn't even tell people to sit down because remember the seatbelt sign has gone off and it's turned green. She doesn't even say, "Please get back in your seat." And it wasn't turbulence. It wasn't. This wasn't turbulence because when at first when the first sound started, I was like, "We hit turbulence," and the seatbelt sign is off. What? No turbulence. Nobody said, "Go, please go back to your seats, people. Please sit down." Nope. She, they let people walk around. The, the, there was a, a, a lapse of minutes before, it was probably like eight minutes, then the pilot comes on. And he's like, okay, let's talk about what just happened. And he was like, you know, we lost an engine. <laughs> but he was real cool with it. He was real cool with it. He said, it appears the left engine just stopped working. He was real cool with it. And then he said, but I only need one engine to land. So we good. I only need one the engine to land. But here's the thing. People are like, where are we? How, how much time do you have? The, you know, th these are regular questions. Everybody's probably thinking, how long do you have? Can you fly on one engine? We can land with one engine, but how long can you fly with one engine? Right? So, um, so the lady next to me, like she starts going ham. Like she's this lady from Germany. She's a little older and she hates to fly. If you do not like to fly, please do not make the declaration that you hate to fly. Because in moments like this, you're, you're going to really feel it. You're really going to nut up. 
in moments like this, you're, you're going to like lose your lunch. Please do not make that declaration that you hate to do anything because listen, notice I'm one of the people who say pray for planes. <laughs> I, I tell you what I see. We're praying for planes and airports. Your home girl is on a plane that has lost an engine. So that means that everybody in this, in this room right here, nobody's exempt. And the Lord will lead you to planes and airports where things are going to pop off because you're an agent of glory. Listen, I was in the first seat. I was the intercessor is in a first seat. I'm on a plane with everybody else that has lost a whole engine. And I don't know anything about engines. I don't know how long can you fly a plane on one engine. I don't know. I don't know the science behind that. Right. I don't know the science behind that. So this lady is going in like she's about to cry. So I'm holding her hand. I'm smiling at her. I'm rubbing her hand. And I keep saying to her, nothing's going to happen. Just be cool. And she's like, what is this? What is going on? What is it? Tell me what it is. I'm not the pilot, ma'am. <laughs> right. Y'all know I'm a jokester and I'm sleepy. Right. I'm sleepy. And, and she says, tell me what it is. Tell me what it is. I mean, she's near tears. Her, she doesn't have a phone because she's from Germany. Her phone doesn't even work. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, I'm, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I'm more concerned with where they're going to find us a plane. That's what I'm, because because dude is turning around going back to Oklahoma. If, if y'all had asked me and said, what do y'all want to do? Go back to Oklahoma or keep flying to Atlanta. Your homegirl would have been in the first seat telling myself, let's go. You're already on the road. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's please keep going to Atlanta. Just let's, let's, let's make it happen. If how many, how many miles do we have on one engine? How many miles do we have on one engine? How many miles is it to Atlanta? If there's a way for us to get to Atlanta on one engine and land, let's make it do what it do. Right? Most people aren't like that. Most people are like, turn around, let's go back. So when he turned that plane around, I said, oh, God, right? I know other people were on the plane, Tom, so they were scared. I was like, oh, my goodness, right? Because I understand. Let, let, let's, let's break it down. Oklahoma Airport has less flights than Atlanta Airport. Way less. So finding all these people, the flight was full. Flights out of Oklahoma is going to be a problem. I already see it. Atlanta seems the the location to Atlanta from Oklahoma seems to be uh, they have so many flights to Atlanta. I mean, so many of those flights were going to Atlanta because of connections. I was one of the only people who actually lived in Atlanta that was on that flight. Everybody else had a connection and that was the problem. That was because they were all going to miss their connections. 97% of the people on that plane were going to lose their connections. And there were people who were flying internationally. Multiple people were leaving the country. They're, they were going to be flying all day to get to their destinations overseas by tomorrow. So this is a huge problem. So immediately that's where I'm going. I'm like, we're going to be fine. The plane, the plane going to land, but we're going to have an issue with how are they going to get all of these people on other planes when all of the planes are full. So we land smooth landing. And they, they, the first thing they say is we're going to have the people look at the engine. And so I'm like, Lord, please don't let nothing be wrong with the engine. We could just take off again. Me, novice, full of faith, right? The people go and look at the engine, y'all. There's nothing wrong with the engine. They're like, the, 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 and they look at it fast. And the pilot is like, they can't find anything wrong with the engine, but we're going to deplane. I was like, ah, oh, right? We're going to deplane. And so everybody's getting off the plane. And because I was in the front first seat, this is so good. So we're going to go a lot of places in this story. Because I was in the first seat, guess, was who, guess who was number one or two in the line to rebook? It took them opening up multiple uh, stations to get all of the people accommodated. People were standing in line for like an hour, hour and a half because of the what? The connections, finding, connecting flights and finding new flights. And then the connections that would try to work would be is an issue. So people were standing in line. 
So I was like number two behind the lady I was sitting with, right? And the dude was like, where are you going? I was like, I'm just going to Atlanta. That's all I'm doing. Remember, I'm first class. I need you to hold on to that because now we're getting ready to take a turn. I'm first class. So he finds me another flight that's leaving at 12. He hands me my ticket and my ticket says, seat will be assigned at the gate in big letters. I don't even have a seat anymore. So I went from first class to not even having a seat anymore. Why? Because all of the flights are booked from first class all the way back to the bathroom. All of the flights are booked. I don't even really have a seat. In big letters, it says seat will be assigned at the gate. And so I'm holding the ticket and I look at the ticket and I'm like, oh, God, we bless you. At this point in the game, Oklahoma ain't a long, it ain't a long flight. We, we'll just take what we can have. But the dude was like, if anything else happens or if they open up the plane again, then uh, what I'm doing is I'm booking you. you. You can take either flight. That's what he said to me. And because he's the, he's the gate agent, I feel like I can trust him. So I'm sitting there while people are like standing in line. Like I'm just sitting there. You know what I mean? And so then um, I'm trying to update my app. And it's like, I can't sign into the flight he just assigned me and my old flight is now gone. And so I'm sitting there in my seat thinking to myself, I don't even have a flight. I don't have a flight. So I'm waiting for the line to go back down because now I'm like, I literally technically can't even get out of Oklahoma because the new flight says no ma'am, no ham, no cheese and no turkey. You can't check in. Something's going on. My luggage, who knows where that is right now? Because you, you, everything's having to be deplaned and I can't even sign in to a flight that's coming because something's going on, right? And so I'm like, okay. So put a pin drop right there. When we talk about the first shall be last and the last shall be first, it only takes one event to shake up your seat. It only takes one event, please write that down, to shake up your seat. It only takes one event to move you around where you don't even know where you will be going. You will be hopping all around. It only takes one event. Listen, so I'm like, okay, I don't even have a, I don't even have a seat on any plane right now. So I go and I, I'm getting ready to see, you know, stand back in line and people are finding out you, 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 you go, we're going to get you to Atlanta, but all your connections going to be gone. People are, people are got to go to work. People are about to cry because this is crazy. So they come on, this is going to bless you. They come on the loudspeaker. Y'all may know this. I did not. I did not know this was a thing. Come on the loudspeaker and, and, and all of the kiosks. And they said, flight 490, 490, 4982. I don't remember our flight number. They said, we have, we are sending a rescue flight for everybody that was on that flight. And so I'm sending, I'm like a rescue flight. They said, right now, we are building the flight into the flight schedule. We have located a plane that is in Atlanta. And we are putting that plane back in the air and we are building out the schedule inside of the flight plan so that now the flight will exist. We are sending a rescue plane. And so I'm just sitting there and I'm like, what? And so of course, revelation is all over the place right now. I didn't even know they had this. I didn't know that they did this. I don't even know this, this was a thing. So you find a plane that maybe is going to be sitting there for an hour or so that's coming from the place that you got to go. You put the, you put the plane back, back in flight and you begin to load in seats and names, seats and names, seats and names, seats and names. Listen. And so I get up to the kiosk and they keep announcing it, but people still have all of these connecting flights on this stuff. And I said to him, I said, listen, uh, and, I, and I ran down what he said, but because the, the gate agent, I got the same person, he doing too much. He's got all these people like this is a, this is a nightmare for the people who are who are the gate agents. And so he he jumped the gun and he was wrong. I literally y'all had no flight. They, they, they were looking for my luggage. 
And so I'm sitting there and he's like, well, yeah, you're scheduled on this. I said, but you said, I I don't know if you remember, it will be like I had two flights, but it's like, I can't sign into this flight because I'm part of the rescue flight. This is so good. So because of the rescue flight, it looked like because it was an event, it looked like my seat was taken. But now there's a rescue flight and the rescue flight is holding on to Anise. The rescue flight said, nope, nope, we are taking Anise. And so the rescue flight would not allow for me to sit on any other plane at any other time, even though my name was on another roster, the rescue flight overtook the other roster and would not allow me to check in, would not take me, said, no ma'am, go see a gate agent. No, absolutely not. So he had to call, listen, The gate agents have one level of power. When they pick up the phone and they tap into customer service, that's where the real power is behind the scenes. And so here it is, he picks up the phone and that person on the other end of the phone is like, okay, Silliman, I see her, I see her first flight, but I don't even see her name. And then they happen to uh, maneuver things because my name now is not on that other roster. And he put my name, he put everything on this other plane that's gonna be taking off at the same time that our rescue flight is getting ready to be taken on. But the rescue flight then grabbed up Anise, even though he done jumped the gun and put me somewhere else. He done jumped the gun and his information, what he thought was gonna work, didn't work. And now I'm sitting out there, the rescue flight said, no, no, she's with us. No, no, listen, listen, listen. What are we saying? What God has for you is for you. And even if an event comes and knocks you out of your seat, God has rescue flights. God has rescue plans. God has created the way of escape. And so when we were up in the air and it felt like pieces of the plane plane was falling off, the Lord said, nope, 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 nope. I, she is going to be on this plane that I've already got grounded somewhere in Atlanta. She is, I got the people already behind the scenes who are ready to build in the schedule. Today, there is getting ready to be a rescue plane that is getting ready to head to Oklahoma and bring a whole crew of people all the way to Atlanta so that nobody misses where they are going. Listen, listen, listen. The lady that was sitting next to me, she had a four hour layover in Atlanta. But because of everything that happened, home skillet is only going to be in Atlanta for 45 minutes. God has accelerated even her where she was going to be sitting there. We got off the plane. Home girl was having to run, walk real fast to her next international gate because her four hours has now become 45 minutes. All of those people became accelerated on their rescue. All of those people now will have to be sitting in Atlanta trying to find their way. What am I going to do to kill time? No, when you touch down in Atlanta, come on here. When you touch down in Atlanta, you only going to have to wait a couple of minutes. You got to get moving. You got to get grooving because what you thought was going to be a wait is now going to be a takeoff. Listen, all of those people got accelerated. All of those people. They thought it was a loss, but God said, I've got a rescue plan. God said, I already know the schedule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I already know the schedule. I already know the schedule. When this plane is getting ready to move around, when this plane is getting ready to jump up and down, I already got a schedule. It's going to be a plane that's sitting there in Atlanta and it's going to be ready to take off. Listen, listen, listen. And so they 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 they, they put a time in because they, they didn't know how long it was going to take and you got to move things off one plane and get ready. They even started accelerating the time we were getting on the plane. Like I couldn't even tell the person who was coming to pick me up because it kept changing. They kept moving it up and moving Moving it up and moving it up. Listen, listen, listen. And so I'm telling the dude, and so he calling the people, and they then then they start getting on the phone, locating my luggage, and they're like, "Listen, we got this luggage. Where is the luggage?" So they're finding my luggage. They're making sure my luggage is going to be on the rescue plane. So I'm standing there, and I was getting ready to pray. This is so good. I was standing there, and I was getting ready to pray, and the Lord said, "No, nope, remember how you felt in the seat. Let's back up." When the plane made the sound, and it felt like something left the plane. It felt like something. Fell off the plane, this peace came over me. Lean in. I always wondered, okay, God, if these things are going to be happening on planes, 
because I'm very pragmatic in the realm of the spirit. And you said that for many of us, we have travel alerts on us. Y'all remember that word? The Lord said there's a travel alert on your life. And so we know that planes and trains and boats are going to be in shenanigans. And so I had this thing before the Lord where I was like, well, well what's going to happen? Like, what would it be like? Like, wh like, what do we do? Like, what? And so I felt like the Lord was like, hmm, let me take you through a door of opportunity. Because listen, I'm one of those people, I don't want to talk big. Are y'all with me? I don't want to talk big. I don't want to talk big in a situation I ain't never been through. It's easy to be like, yeah, we got faith. Yeah, we not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you ain't never been through it, if you ain't never sat on a plane and felt the engine, it felt like the engine fell off. They said it was still there, but it felt like something fell off. You don't know how you're going to act. But I was in that first seat and this piece. I mean, this peace came over me. The lady is jerking and moving and crying and she had every right to be. And, and people, when we were standing in line, they were like, I was so scared, I was so scared. I don't know what to do, I don't so scared. But I'll tell you what was also on that plane when, we, when people were standing in line, gratefulness. Gratefulness, all these people, I mean, they were hugging. The, t the gate agents, they were hugging the captain. They were hugging the flight attendants because we still we still flew with the same flight crew on the rescue plane. Everybody on the old plane got on the rescue plane. Everybody. They were so grateful. They were, I mean, there was just this spirit of gratefulness. I ain't never been on a plane like that because everybody always got something to say about something. There was just this gratefulness. There was this camaraderie. There was this one accordness. But when I was sitting there and all that noise and the lady the, before the captain came on, she's like, did you hear that? Did you hear that? She's like, why are you acting like this? What is wrong with you? Why are you acting like this? Why are you not all up? And I was like, listen, it's going to be okay. You're going to Germany. It's You're going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. There was this peace and there was this calm and there was this strength and there was this authority. I was not once that think we we're going down. Not once that I, there was this peace and this authority that came and, and the lady she got, it's like she stepped inside of the peace. Her breathing became regulated. She be just began to sit there. She wasn't all over the place. When we touched down, she's on the phone with her husband and she's just talking in, in, the, the, her, in, in, in her German tongue and she's talking. She walks up to me and she said, what is your name? And I said, my name is Anise. And she said, I will never forget your name. She was just, I mean, every person that she could talk to, she was like, oh my gosh. She said, this woman right here, she she was like, she kept apologizing. I'm sorry. And I said, don't apologize. I was like, I believe I was, I was sitting here for you. I believe I was set beside you. When listen, when in my when I was so calm, she calmed down. I looked over at her. The lady was speaking in tongues. Yeah, she was a believer. That lady was speaking in tongues. She, and, and so she looked at me, she said, when we walked, she's like, yeah, I just, I just had to start praying. She wasn't praying at first because she was all up in the air. She didn't, she, she didn't, her first thing was not pray. Her first thing was going to anxiety. Her first thing was going to fear. But then here it was, there's this, this, this black girl sitting beside her, going to hold her hand, going to stroke her shoulder, going to stroke her hand and tell her you will live and not die. You're going to make it to Germany. And I told her you're going to make it to Germany on time. You gonna make it to Germany on time. Come on here. You gonna make it. You gonna make it to Germany on time. Next thing I know, I look over at her while I'm holding her hand. She's speaking in tongues. So she was like, she was like, and then when we got off and we got to Atlanta, right? She gets off the plane and she said, she said, I'm gonna see you again. She said, I'm gonna see you again. She said, I don't know if it's gonna be in Oklahoma because her sister lives in Oklahoma. She said, I don't know if it's gonna be in Oklahoma. I don't know if it's gonna be in Florida. I don't know if it's gonna be in Atlanta. I don't know if it's gonna be in Germany. She said, but I believe I'm gonna see you again. And I believe I'm gonna see her again. I believe the Lord put me on that flight for her. I believe the Lord, this was her time for her faith to be put in God. And now for her saying, I hate to fly, I hate to fly, I hate to fly. She knows that she was cradled in the arms of God. She has no reason to hate flying. Come on here. No reason to hate getting in the air. No reason to curse what God has put on her life. I believe I was set there just for her. And so... Uh, they found, you know, our tickets and, and, and they put me back in first class. Come on here. Cause I, I, I didn't have a seat. Everything was restored. There was a rescue flight. And so I have been praying. I've been saying, okay, God, what is best week going to be about? What do you want to talk about uh, best week? What do you want to talk about? And the Lord said, talk about the rescue flight. Talk about the rescue flight. 
Sometimes we are going through something and our life shake, rattles and rolls and it feels like the engine goes out. We got to land, but now it's getting ready to turn everything topsy-turvy. We're getting ready to land and we're going to land safely, but everything's going to be lost. And the Lord says, tell them I'm going to build them a rescue flight. My God, I'm going to, I'm going to take what's there and I'm getting ready to remix it. Come on. They said, we got to build the flight into the system. We got to build. So that means that there's wiggle room in the system and the realm of the spirit. There was wiggle room and the realm of the spirit. Nothing is absolute. The only thing that is absolute is God himself. The only thing that is absolute is the word of the Lord itself. And so the Lord is saying, listen, if I told you, come, let's go to the other side, then you better believe you are getting to the other side in the same boat, in the same position that he sent you to get there. Come, let's go to the other side, rescue flights. And so I just want to release that word over your life. I lived it yesterday. I didn't know it was a thing for commercial airlines. I didn't know that that was a thing. And so the Lord allowed me to live inside of a revelation. And now I'm getting ready to pray, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, that this is the season of rescue flights. Hallelujah. This is the season where the Lord is building, the Lord is building out a schedule that did not exist and he is causing there to be air. Listen, when you dream language, what are planes? What are planes represent dream language? Come on here. That when you feel like something has happened to your life, listen, some people have gone through crash and burn and you feel like the word of the Lord is lost. And the Lord says, no, we're boarding. We're boarding. We're boarding and we're boarding your rescue flight. We're boarding, we're boarding, and we're boarding your rescue flight. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to board. Your luggage is intact. Everything, your seat has been saved. The same seat that uh, you were in when you left off is the same seat you're getting ready to occupy as we start up again. Come on here. You didn't lose even your seat. You didn't lose your position. You didn't lose any time. In fact, if anything, everything's getting ready to be rocking and rolling a little bit faster. There is a rescue flight that has come to your life. There is a rescue flight that has come to your days. There is a rescue flight that has come to your relationships. There is a rescue flight that has come to your destiny. The Lord has built out a, a new schedule and he's inserted it in to the schedule that already is. And you said, how is this going to work? And God says, rescue flight. How am I going to get back on schedule rescue flight? How am I going to get back into rescue flight? And so even in the midst of shenanigans, listen, listen, listen. Other planes had uh, engine issues yesterday. I have watched other planes. Listen, I have watched people. I have watched people say they were on planes and one of them had engine failure before the plane took off. And I watched them be in the airport all day. And sometimes they were in the airport and they had to spend the night in, in hotels. No, -uh. God brought a rescue flight. The flight was put in motion within the same hour. The flight was put in motion in the same hour. Rescue came in the same hour of calamity. Res a door, an exit door was open the same hour. Come on here. I've watched other people be stuck in places because they had engine failure before they took off. But because, listen, 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 when I was in the air, remember what I told you, I already understood the logistics of uh, Oklahoma versus Atlanta. I could see the logistics and I said, they're not going to be able to handle this. Their airport is not going to be able to handle what Atlanta can, can handle. Most of these people are connecting. They're not going to be able to handle and so the Lord, listen, listen, listen. Sometimes the Lord will have you in a small place. Because if we were in Atlanta, you ain't going to get no rescue flight. Listen, if this happens in Atlanta, you're not going to get no rescue flight. You're going to sit there. They're going to disperse you into all these other flights. Why? Because there's so many flights. Because there's so many flights, they're going to disperse people. And because of the gate agents, some gate agents, they, they work a little faster than other gate agents. So because of whatever line you're in, those flights are going to sell out. Ain't going to be no more seats. 
And some people who are going to be at the end of the line, they're going to be sitting in Atlanta for uh, for the until the next day because they're not going to build no rescue flight because Atlanta got too many flights coming out of it. But the Lord says, because I brought you or you're starting in a small place. It's another word. Because you're starting in a smaller place. Because you're starting in a place. Uh, remember, don't despise despise small beginnings. Some of y'all, we we in small places. We 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 want to be in that big. We want to have a whole bunch of movement, a whole bunch of stuff going on. Because it's big, it's big. And the Lord says, no, no, no. If it's in the big place, you ain't gonna get no rescue flight. You don't have to hurt. You don't have to sit there and wait. You don't have to wait it out. But because I was in a small place, because I was in a place that said we don't have the capacity, and we know we don't have the capacity, we gonna just do. They made that decision so fast. They found that plane so fast. Come on here. And because I stopped in Atlanta, I didn't have no connection for it. I didn't have nothing else. I wasn't like everybody else. Listen, listen. And so the Lord says, and I believe I got to live this because this is a prophetic word for the believer in 2024. Rescue after rescue after rescue. That's going to make sure that you're still right on time. Rescue after rescue after rescue that's going to make sure you show up to the place that God said you're going to stand up in. Rescue after rescue after rescue in the name of Jesus. What God has created, tailor-made, ordered, and ordained. No event. No event. No event can exalt itself against the knowledge of God. No event. So I'm, I got swallowed up in this event. Dude, he jumped the gun because he, he was he was he was doing what he was supposed to do. He didn't know. They didn't tell him that they were even looking at a rescue flight. They didn't let the gate agents know that they were even looking for a rescue flight. They were doing something behind the scenes. So he got me caught up between two worlds where I was stuck. But it was only because God said, no, 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 no. This rescue, this rescue arms are wrapped around Denise. I won't even make it work. If, if, if I had been able to tap into that other flight, I would have been stuck at that other flight and I would have to show up to that gate with this ticket that said, your seat is going to be assigned at the gate. So I was, I was literally on standby. Let's call it what it is. I was on standby. And so the Lord said, no, 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 no. I'm going to make it so that she can't even, she can't even uh, uh, sign in to this new flight. I'm going to make it where she can't even, she has no other uh, choice. I created this rescue flight. I'm going to make sure Anise is on this flight. I'm going to make sure of it. Why? Because when I built it, her name was on it. Come on here. When I put this together, when I knew this was coming down the pipeline, the, uh, the, the seats were already assigned. The seats were, and so even though when the, when they were looking for me, when he the gate agent I'm staring at and the person he called behind the seats, they can't find me. I don't know where the first class seats were. They couldn't even put it together. They had to they had to reassign. Thank you, Jesus. And so I even got my old seat back. Come on here. Nothing was lost in the event. And so I'm prophesying to you in the event, in the past events you had, nothing was lost. You're about to board your rescue flight. You're about to board this vehicle that was created for you to arrive at your destination on time or before time. That all of the events in your life have been pushed up. All of the things that are coming, it's, it's, that's how it's accelerated. It's going to feel like because there was an event over here and where it seems like you lost time. Come on here. When you get, when you touch down at your new, at your location, you were always going to, now you're going to have to run to get to your next place. You want, why? Because everything's now accelerated. I need you to be encouraged. What God said is what God said. I need you to be encouraged. There's some events that are happening in 2024. There's some events that are happening in 2024. The Lord says to tell you, that in the event of the event, you will not lose your seat. In the event of the event, you will not lose your destiny. In the event of the event, you will not be shaken. In the event of the event, you are going to be at such peace. Listen, I told you, if he was like, y'all want to push it? I would have been like, push it. Push it. Why? Because I just, I knew. It was like the Holy Spirit just settled me and I, ain't nothing getting ready to happen here. 
And if, if the other engine went out, there was going to be an angel would have been walking through the earth, holding the plane. Just walking through the earth, holding the plane and bringing it to its destination and setting it down. It's peace. I know a lot of people are, are you know, even with the, what's going on, the they're saying gas up and get your groceries because it's going to be a lockdown. Something's going to happen. Some, some, there's, there's going to be shootings and mass murders and the grid's going to go down. Well, I mean, y'all, the eclipse happened so fast. I don't know how they're going to do all that. If you know anything about eclipses, they happen fast. They, you, you don't sit and you're not plunged into darkness for days. Some people believed that the earth was going to be in darkness for days because of an eclipse. That the Lord didn't, the Lord didn't design the, the eclipses to do that. People were literally went out and spent money on extra groceries. There's nothing wrong with that. Because you know, maybe you need to stock up or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. But some people feel like there's going to be. The what's happening in the earth is going to mess with what God said you got to do. Listen, the Lord said I had to come to Oklahoma. The Lord ordained me to be in Oklahoma. The Lord's not going to call me to Oklahoma and then drop me out of the sky on my way back home. This, this is not going to work. The Lord said there's a couple of there's some other things I got to do in some other places I got to be. And so if the Lord said that on the strength of his word, I ride the wave. Rescue flights. Rescue flights, two minutes. Come on here, four minutes. Two minutes and four minutes. People like, if somebody comes knocking on your door, don't open the door. These are demons becoming human form. The demons in human form been there. They don't get activated during an eclipse. I'm just saying. The Bible says we entertain angels unaware. So that means on the other side of the fence, turn the coin over, same form, angels, period. Ain't the word angel is neutral. The devil's workers are angels. Come on, demons are what? Angels, fallen angels, come on. So they just didn't get activated today, they've been activated. They, that's been a thing. They come to your door. These are really shadow people. They're shadow people, baby. Them shadow people or whatever you call them, they've been there. That's the thing. Them black cats that come and that be lurking around your yard. That owl that came out of nowhere that's over your, that's over your neighborhood. Them crows, come on. We got to be discerning in the realm of the spirit. You walk by this house or you drive by this house that's covered in black crows. Guess what? It's always been there. It's always been there, sweetie. We entertain angels unaware. You entertain demons unaware. <laughs> Your destiny is not going to be truncated by the events that are taking place in the earth. If anything, it's going to be accelerated. These moments are doors of opportunity for you to trust God and then move in a place of acceleration. You still have a flight. I pray out here with me in the realm of the spirit. You still got a flight alert on your life. You still got a travel alert on your life. You still have a promotion alert on your life. God, God's not changing his word. God's not relenting on his word. It's time to pick up the pace. And so for everybody who has been waiting on a thing, I believe that one of the one of the things that the Lord did yesterday was he allowed me to sit on a rescue flight. And I believe that that is the word of the Lord over this season. I believe that the Lord, the month of April uh, is just one of those months. You know how you have months of uh, in the B guard, we're dealing with season cycles and patterns, season cycles and patterns. Today is the day my mom passed three years ago. On the 15th, which is tax day, which for some people is a bad day. That's when my divorce was finalized 10 years ago. My daughter is getting married this month. Come on here. My, my daughter is getting married this month. 
So the Lord is changing the month of April. There's a rescue flight. There's a rescue flight. The Lord is bringing new things into the month of April as a rescue flight. Their cycles and seasons are being turned over and the goodness of God and the graciousness of God and the mercy of God is, is now rewriting, rewriting some things. It's rewriting some things. Come on here. And so there are some things that are being rewritten from you for you. And that's really you're just you're just seated. You're seated in a seat on a rescue flight. I want you to take this word to heart. The Lord, at the same time, the temptation was created. The Lord also created the, the exit. The exit was also, listen, what do you do when you build a building? You, you build in the exit signs. You build in the exits. The exits are there on the blueprint. You never build a building without having the exit signs in the blueprint. The exit come standard with the entrance. When we enter a thing, the exit is also present. When we enter a season, the exit is always present. The way of escape is already present when you enter into a thing. God doesn't create something when you're in the middle of it. He knows the duration. He knows the severity. He knows the pressure. He knows everything that's going to come through it because it is a controlled environment. There's going to be seasons within seasons within seasons, doors within doors within doors. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. The rescue flight has been built into the system. The rescue flight has been built into the season. The rescue flight has been built into the plan. When I, when I got my plane ticket, there was a rescue flight already in motion. When they sent me my plane ticket, the rescue flight was already in motion. When I checked into my flight, the rescue flight was already in motion. God never told me, listen, God didn't have me, I mean, you, maybe you, you, I'm, carn, I'm carnal or something. I was not speaking in tongues. I was not fasting over my flight. I wasn't fasting over my flight. I wasn't, I wasn't going days praying about the flight, praying about the travel. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. Why? Because if the Lord said go, everything is going to be good. It's when the Lord doesn't tell you to go. That's when you can, you can have a level of shenanigans. I wasn't in, I wasn't speaking in tongues over my flight. I wasn't going deep off in deep prayer about the, about any of that. I pray the same little prayer I pray when I get in the car and it take less than 30 seconds. It take less than 30 seconds to say that prayer. That I wasn't, I, I wasn't even thinking about it. I wasn't even thinking about it. I don't even think about it. I don't just go through the airport and my head in the clouds. I love airports, head in the clouds all over the place. All over the place. So to my surprise, when the, <laughs> when the plane starts knocking and making all these sounds, y'all, I didn't even go into prayer then. I went into peace. I did. I'm, I'm keeping it 100 with you. I didn't even go into prayer. I went into peace. Something activated. Something active. I didn't even pray. I didn't even say, oh, God, keep us. Oh, God, I knew we were. I knew it. I knew I knew everybody on that plane was getting to their destination. I didn't even pray. I didn't even pray. I didn't even. I, the thought to pray didn't even come upon me. But I begin to prophesy to the Lord. I begin to exhort comfort, spirit of prophecy. And I'm sure other people around, I'm sure the seats, I'm sure they could hear. Because she was, she was going in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? She was going in a little bit. But there was just such a calmness. Such a calmness. 
didn't even pray. Because I knew. I knew what I knew. I knew it. This is an opportunity to put your faith in God. And when the opportunity presents itself, there's going to be an activation. The, all you got to do is when, when we jump out of a plane, it's not time to pray. It's time to press the button and release the parachute that's already been strapped to your back. The parachute that's been strapped to your back. All I did was press the button and the parachute that was strapped to my back released. Step into, step into, step into. There's going to be a whole lot of activating things, a whole lot of activation that's going to happen in 2024. And your response may look different than everybody else's. Like the lady thought something was wrong with me. I was so nonchalant. I was cracking jokes, right? I was, I was smiling. I was, I was not looking around. I wasn't jittery. I'm not trying to be all up in the, in the mouths of the flight attendants. She was like, what's, what's wrong with you? Why are you not, why are you not panicking? Why, why are you sitting there so calm? I can't explain it. I can't, it was like the Holy Spirit just came upon me and just sat there. Activating. The Lord will send you into some chaos so that you will be the sound of clarity. There is a line of demarcation. You will have Jesus type swag and it will be activated as you step into deeper walking in 2024. There will be events. There will be stuff. But for the believer, that is not our focus. God said, come, let's go to the other side. We're going to the other side in Jesus name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Now, I list, listen, I love you. Tomorrow we are fasting. Everybody in the room should be fasting. We're fasting for our zip codes. We're fasting for what, what, what's happening. We're fasting. Listen, I don't know if y'all saw that. Did, did y'all get that um, email from Airbnb today? Did y'all get an email from Airbnb? I got it this morning when we were doing the B-Guard before it started, I got an email from Air Airbnb. Airbnb sent out an email and it's an update. It's an update to one of their clauses. They renamed it, but it says, in the event of an event that causes the grid to go down or you can't move in, in terms of some sort of quarantine, you 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 will be uh, repaid. It, there will be some. Um, you won't have to worry about losing money or losing your Airbnb. But Airbnb is funny. They said if something happens where you can't travel to get to your Airbnb, there's nothing we can do for you. I said to myself, I said that is interesting verbiage. That's real interesting verbiage for Airbnb to be releasing. Super interesting. Super interesting verbiage if the grid goes down in case of power outages or quarantines, travel alerts. We got you. But if something happens, let's say like plane stuff and the and and the where the Airbnb is good, oh you on your own. You lost it. I said, mm, super interesting. There will be events. There will be events. But for the believer, the focus is not the event. The focus is to be the light. Arise and shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We're fasting tomorrow. We're praying for people who maybe don't have the verbiage of prayer. We're praying for people who are in fear. We're praying for people who, who are let down that the world didn't come to the end to an end today. They're disappointed the rapture didn't happen. We're praying, we're fasting for them. Some people really wanted the rapture to happen. They were rapture ready. Some people really wanted the, 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 the everything to end. And they're still here. 
are still here. We're praying. We're praying for people of other religions. We're praying. And I just want to leave y'all with this. I know there's a lot of things that are coming um, across um, the airways, but I need you before you pray from a neutral place to remember God doesn't hate humans. God does not hate humans. God does not hate the United States of America. He may hate what we do, but he does not hate what he created and what he fathers. Please don't fall into the trap that God is so angry with us that he hates us, that it will bring him pleasure to wipe us out. That will bring him pleasure to, because it doesn't. Why would he send his son? That would that that thinking negates the power of the cross. Do y'all hear me? That kind of thinking, that kind of verbiage nullifies the power of the cross. Why would you send your son? Why would you put a plan in motion, a redemption plan in motion to get pleasure out of wiping out nations, people? He is slow to anger. And even in his chastising, it is out of love. It is to call people back home, which is him. It's to call people back. It's to bring repentance so that he can restore. Then I will hear from heaven. He wants to. He wants to. So he does things. He allows things to take place so the people would cry out and he could hear from heaven and correct it. Please don't fall into that. He hates us. He can't wait to get rid of us. We are horrible before him. Then why did he give us Jesus? Why did he give us Jesus? When I think about Jesus, I know he loves me. When I think about the cross, I know he loves me. When I think about uh, the resurrection, I know that I know that I know he wants us all before him. The table of showbread, being in the face of God, being in the presence of God. So please be careful of, of getting with the, not trying to condemn anybody and how they prophesy or how they see even in uh, words that are corrective, even in Jeremiah type prophecies, there is hope because it is the hope of God that I get your attention, that you would return and come back to me. That's love. Everything God does is out of love. Everything God does is out of love. So please be careful agreeing with and chiming in on the doom and the gloom as if it's to just drop us off in hell. And it's not a, a doorway to an opportunity to be restored into rightful position with him. That's all God is after. That's all God is after. So tomorrow we're fasting. We want to agree with God about his greatest creation. We want to agree with God. God, we want all of the people, all of, as many people who will say, we, we, we want all the people. It is your desire that none would perish. We with you, God. We with you. We with you. And so we're fasting for our little piece of the world. And the Lord will hear us. The Lord answers us. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. We have prayer at 6 a.m. If you want to join the B-Guard, that's where I'd be in the morning. You can come still and join the B-Guard. We're getting ready to release uh, one of the months of the B-Guard with the workbook. Uh, 30 days is going to blow your mind. It's not no, it ain't no weird coaching sessions. It's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. 
because it's a God thing. It's not a Denise thing. I'm not that smart. It's a God thing. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. See you guys tomorrow. I mean, yeah, tomorrow when we fasted. Yeah. <laughs> Good night.